Hi everybody, my name is LaDonna and I'm with the Painted Ivy. We're going to do a really quick craft today. So if you bear with me for just a second, let me set up my comments so I can see you. And uh, we will get started. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's a fun project you can do even with your kids or anything like that. So, um, just one second. We're going to do a reverse canvas today. And um, we're going to do reindeer. Okay, I can see um, Okay, now here we are. When you hop on, say hi, let me know you're here. I'm gonna get started. And um, I don't think this will take us that long. Okay, we're going to, first of all, I just purchased a regular canvas from the Arts and Crafts store. You could get these at, um, I guess, Target, Walmart, um, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, any store like that, you can go online and buy them. They're just a regular canvas. Now, a reverse canvas is instead of painting on this side, we're going to work on this side and take this cover off and make it look like a frame. So, I have this tool. It's made by Arrow, and it is made specifically to remove staples like this. So, all you do is you just put it under and you wiggle it a little and you lift. It just makes the whole process a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna take these out real quick. The other one I did worked really fast. Okay, there it goes. And all you do is slide it under and just lift them. And if it doesn't lift up, I just have a pair of um, pliers or wire cutters or whatever you want to call them. And I just peel the, just a little twist of the wrist and the staples pop right out. So that's one side. And now we're going to do the other. And if you go under the canvas, I find it's a lot easier to do that. So I just slide it and lift. Just wiggle it back and forth like this here, and it eventually takes the staple up. And it's not very hard. It's just put a little tiny bit of effort into it. And you could do this rather quickly. Now, another thing you're gonna find is, and I didn't know this until, um, and I've used canvases my whole life, but I never took the canvas off. Um, hi, Anne. Um, I didn't know this, but um, underneath these canvases are really kind of neat boards that look like a frame. You know, they're routed and everything, and I just had no idea. I didn't know they were like that. So now I'm a little more prone to taking the canvas off of them and working on them. It's just a new way, a little twist on a, a new project. And I don't want to get any of the staples in the carpet, so I'm just tossing them in the trash can right beside me. Hi, Lori. How are you? And is it cold where you're at yet? Lori, I haven't seen you on here in a few days. Okay, guys, so now we have all the staples out. 
of the canvas. And let me show you. All you do is just take the canvas off. I missed a staple. Snowed already? Wow. I think we probably, of course, I'm in Benville, Arkansas, so we get a little dusting of snow. I hear it hasn't really been bad since we've been here. See, it has this routered edge on it. I don't know if you could tell that in the picture. And we have this large piece of canvas. So I'm going to set the canvas aside because to prep our project, we have to... <laughs> This tool does the job, and I went and bought this tool, and it moves it really fast. So we're going to set this aside because we're going to work with that in just a minute. And now, I didn't do it here because it takes time to dry, but this has little grooves in here. I don't know if you can see the little holes from the corners of the canvas. Now, I take wood putty, and I fill these in typically. Uh, before I paint and I let it dry and then I sand it down and I sand any of the edges that may need to be smoothed out a little because it just makes for a nicer presentation on the other side but for the purpose of the demonstration today because I have a board prepped I'm going to show you how to paint this oh they are awesome I mean just absolutely awesome I will not do this without them anymore the first time I tried doing this without the um, tool, and guys, I'm using gloves because my friend Ann here taught me a quick way to cover the surface here. So um, I'm just using regular craft paint. This just happens to be Waverly chalk paint, but I like it because it dries pretty quick. And um, I'm using the gloves because it is just a tad bit messy. And I'm a messy crafter anyway. So this is um, Ann's little trick. And I just steal it every now and then. So what I do is I take a little bit on a baby wipe or a wet wipe. And um, told you I'm a messy crafter. And then I just rub it on. And you could do this in whatever color you want. I suggest something complimentary to your project, of course. And you can use brown if you want it to look like a brown frame. We're going to dress this one up when we're done. So we're going to give it a little glitz and glam. Just go over all the corners. Now, after I finish this live, because I'll be using this frame on something else, um, I won't actually use this particular one today because it needs to dry. I will go in and fill in the, um, the wood putty spots and make sure those are all nice and cleaned up just because I think it looks nicer. So I just want to show you guys how quick this is to do. And you just go over it with your little wet wipe and keep dipping it down in your paint. It doesn't take a lot of paint. And so I just brush over the whole thing. Make sure you get the outside here and then do the inside of your frame as well in here and get all that done. Now, because I'm going to go through the speed of time, you see how easy this is to cover. I'm not going to actually finish this here because you get the concept of how to do it and that's what's important. So I'm actually going to set this aside. And I have a little plastic bag sitting down here to lay it on so I don't get a mess everywhere. And put my paint away. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is when you're done, this is what it looks like. And I filled in, you can see I filled in the corners. And everything so we're going to take this because this is dry and I'm going to add a little gold just enough gold to give it some highlight I don't want a ton of gold on it 
and I forgot to um, I forgot to get a palette. I'm looking to see what I can use for a palette. I'll just use this. Okay. So I need to, and we're going to dry brush it. So I'm just going to barely get some on. I'm not adding any water. And then all we're going to do is scrape across. And do long strokes because you just want the shimmer. You just want a little bit of shimmer. And I probably should have got a thicker brush. And you guys, I see um, a lot of people doing crafts and they're like, if they're new to crafts, they're wondering, where can I get a paintbrush? You can get them at Michael's, Hobby Lobby. You could order them from Amazon. But unless you're like a serious painter, don't spend a lot of money. You could get a pack of like 12 or 15 brushes for like five or six dollars. And if you clean them after each time and stuff, they'll last you a while. And I'm just putting a very light coat on here, just enough so when the light hits it, you might say, is that a little gold on there? So that's what we want. We just want the idea that there might be some gold to it. Mainly because we're just trying to dress up something. And if you keep your brush dry, you can achieve that look. And you probably can't tell a lot on the camera, but it just has a little Hand of gold. Hi, Dana. Thank you for joining today. We're doing a reverse canvas, and right now I'm just highlighting the frame with a little gold highlights. The important thing that I find to do with this is try to make sure that you get all your brush strokes go in the grain of the wood. It kind of gives it a more believable um, design, I guess you'd call it. And make sure you get the inside as well as the outside. And I want to add a little more on the top. And then we're going to wind this down. Now this just kind of antiqued it a little is all it did. And I'll set my paintbrush aside. And we'll throw that away. Now... I don't know if you can see a little bit of gold every now and then. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to hit it with a blow dryer and then we're going to get busy with our project. <laughs> oh my goodness. I forgot my staple gun. I can't believe that. I'm going to have to go get it. Okay, I lay this down back on top of the canvas like this. Okay, now I'm going to cut the sides. But what I like to do is I like to lay it down. You can see the crease of where it was and I just want to get some see the folds there's a fold here and a fold here I'm going to cut it with scissors 
just to um, kind of clean up some of the clutter. And then I could go back and use my X-Acto knife to do a better job to clean it up without all of the fabric in the way. This just makes it a little faster. Because I still have some cleanup to do, but I don't have to be so precise at this point. I literally have a hair hanging on my glasses. Okay, now I'm gonna lay it down and I'm going to use my metal um, ruler. Now, um, when you're using an X-Acto knife, of course, use extreme caution. Don't let children do it. And make sure that your blade is sharp. So measure twice, cut once. That's the rule. And I have my metal ruler under here. So I'm not cutting on my frame. And if you want to freehand it, that's fine, but I'm not that good at freehanding with a blade. I want it to look a little nicer than what my free hand will give me. And it doesn't have to be exact, exact, because it is on the back of the frame. So if you're off just a little bit, it'll be okay because it's going to be hidden. I like to finish off the back of the frame so you won't even see the, the um, canvas when I'm done on mine. I like for it to have a finished look to it. And so when I'm done with it, it'll have brown paper on the back. My dog must hear the neighbors. You guys, you have to overlook it. I picked up a little bit of my dad growing up, and I can't do anything without holding my mouth open. So, it's okay. Now I have a few little threads here. I'm just going to trim. I need to change my blade on my knife. All right. And we'll get that out of our way. So, when we're done, this fits perfectly on the back like this. And you won't see any of that from the front okay so let's get chalking this is what we're doing today we're listing the reindeers hi Elisa how are you I'm glad you can join I like having all my cousins on here Elisa is, um, for my other cousins on the Duggar side, Elisa is my dad's twin's um, daughter. So we're doing the reindeers, and I need to center it. And I'm not going to fuzz it because it's already going on fabric. So I am going to take a little time and make sure that I have it centered because I want it to look straight. 
and let's all cross our fingers and pray my husband comes home before we're finished because I have no idea where we put the staple gun. We're going to lift it up just a little bit because I know a little secret about what's going on here. Okay, so I'm going to rub this down really well. And get the air bubbles out. And guys, I could either ink this or chalk it. But I'm going to chalk it. If I ink it, all I have to do, the difference between using the ink and the chalk, is I would need to iron it when I'm done. To heat set it. And so we're going to do red for Rudolph. And <laughs> thinking, I'm thinking. Let's do periwinkle for the snow, the little flurries. And what about green? Do you guys think I should put? Hi, Martha. Do you guys think I should do the um? The reindeer's name's in green. Thinking of thinking. I use the dark side of the canvas and because I feel like if I use this side and I just put the design on it, it doesn't feel finished to me. And so um, it's just such a stark white color. And so I like using the other side because it's kind of muslin colored. And um, it just makes it look like it's supposed to be that way instead of I just didn't feel like painting it. So that's kind of how I look at it. But I paint a lot and it bothers me doing the other side without covering the background. So that's why I do it. It's just my little hang up. Um, Hi, Shelly. Should we do green, guys, for the names of the reindeers, or should we do blue? Dark blue. Ooh, what about azure? That's a pretty color. I think we'll do that. Since nobody voted, designer's choice. I'm pulling the designer card. Okay, so let's stir up some paste. And the only reason I'm not using white for the snowflakes is because I just don't think you're going to be able to see them. Thank you, Martha. I needed a little vote of confidence here. Okay, we're gonna work fast when we do this. So, I'm just gonna stir my colors up real quick and then we'll do this really quick. It's the first time I've smelt paint, like a paint smell when I'm doing this. Okay, I will stop complaining. Let me get my tools. And we have to stir the red. And these are water soluble Okay, so all you have to do is, if they're a little dry, is add a little bit of water. Now, these are meant to wash off, but because I'm putting it on fabric, guys, it's pretty much permanent. But we're okay with that.
this isn't a design you probably want to hang out 24 7 year round Hi, Tanya. Welcome to the Painted Ivy. Okay, guys, we're going to work really quick, and then I'll hold it up so you can see what I'm doing after because I have to move quick to get the paste. I'm just doing the snowflakes first and then I'm going to go back and do the reindeer names. And you want this to glide over your project really easy and then you know you have the right consistency. I like this as your color. And I always find it feels a little rougher going on canvas, but I don't want to water my paste down too much because that's going to make it bleed. So um, I like the consistency that I have it. I just have to work really quick. That's the learning curve with doing this is you just have to work fast. And <clears throat> once you figure out the consistency of the paste, and the speed you need to work with, this is really easy. And if you guys would like to make this project on your own or put this on a chalkboard or anything like that, I do sell the transfers and the paste. And guys, I just messed up because I started covering up Rudolph. So we're going to see if we could fix it. I was getting so excited. Their names kind of blend in down here. Okay. I just have to maybe if we paste over it it'll be okay it's going to look a little ombre Alright, let's peel it up. It still looks cute. Have a little on my hands. And Rudolph's in red. So I'm going to close up my paste and hit this with a dryer. And then we can move on to the next step because we are almost done guys that's just how quick you can make a project hi Marley welcome to the painted ivy I think I've seen you in here a time or two okay let's hit it with a blow dryer use a cold dryer. It takes no time, but on fabric I want to take a little more time with it.
Okay, now you guys are going to have to excuse me. Let me go see if I can grab the staple gun really quick. Okay, so we've painted our frame and lined it. We're going to staple this on the back. And I'm just going to turn my hot glue gun on. And you want to, let me turn this off just a tad bit more because I don't want it hanging over. I could afford to cut a little bit off because the frame is at least an inch on both sides. So that's not going to hurt it. But I would rather have a little more when I start than not enough. So I'm just doing a little trim. Okay, I think we're good to go there. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to staple at the top center here, and then I'm going to staple at the bottom. And you hold your staple gun down, and it just makes a loud noise, but it's fairly easy. And then I do the centers on both sides and hold it tight. Hi, Julia. Welcome to my live crafting. And guys, you just want to make sure it's tight so that when you look at the other side, it doesn't have a bow in it. And the last one, that's how we do the back. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of brown paper because we like to have a finished look. So just cut off. like the ragged look on it so we're just going to cut this into a manageable size that'll work on smaller frames and then we're going to lay it out and cut around it because when you go and you buy pictures in the store they have a nice little backing on them and you want to give your product a finished look so this is what I do and I take my exacto knife and I carefully go around the edge of my picture
Be careful not to cut the frame. Make sure you have a cutting mat under it. Okay, then we take this and we're going to take our double side tape and lay it around the edges and then lay the brown paper on it. That just gives it a finished look. Hi, Sean. You peel off the back of the double stick tape. And then we're just going to lay this down. Anything that you put on here, if you have it a little too much, you could always go back and trim it up. And hide your little flaw. Well, let me cut it a little bit deeper. Okay, so let me find my lid so I don't stab myself. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. You guys, y'all have hung with me through this whole live, so I'm just going to have to be honest with you here. I bought this little ornament the other day, and I thought, oh, how cute. And I got it out and picked out my little craft, and I was getting ready to kind of go live and put it all together. And I painted his nose so it would be Rudolph. But you guys, I think this is a moose. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. I think it's a moose. But now I've made the moose a reindeer. So um, we're going to roll with it today because that's what we do here. And we're just going to roll with it. It may be a moose. It may be a reindeer. I'm not to judge. But we're just going to use it and make the best of it. So I don't know exactly what it is. But he has a red nose now, and so we're gonna go with it. So this is our picture. 
and we are done. The back, ah, I knew that wasn't dry. Okay, so I'll show you the back again. Let me stick him back on. The back looks really nice. So this is how easy it is for you to make home decor projects at home. And let me just push on the mousse a little more. You guys, thank you so much for staying with me today while I do this. And I'm going to put a little hanger on the back of this. And um, antlers are antlers. I know, but it's a moose, I think. And um, someone said, well, reindeer have smaller faces. And I'm like, well, this one ate a lot. So I don't know what to do with it. It's a reindeer now. So um, anyway, you guys, thank you so much for coming today and watching me craft. And I'll be back tomorrow. Y'all have a good day. I'll post the pictures online when I'm done. Y'all share my page, like my page, um, join my VIP group. So glad y'all are here. Thank you. Have a good day.